Hi there! Today's project features the exotic imagination of Henri Rousseau, a French painter who did not begin painting until he was in his 40s. Looking at the paintings by Henri Rousseau, you might believe that he traveled to many distant lands. However, he never left France. Instead, his canvases are transported to amazing places created by his imagination from visits to the botanical gardens, zoos, and books that he read. He was a self-taught painter. We will be working with paints, creating shades and textures, and then we will collage with this painted paper. First, I want to demonstrate how to blend the primary colors to make different secondary colors. Here I'm using blue and yellow to make green. And depending on how much blue or yellow, I will have a yellower green or a darker green. Adding white will give me a tint, a pastel of green, and adding a bit of red, green's complementary color, will give me a darker green. And you can see that I continue to modify my color until I like it. And adding black will give you a darker shade of green. Black is really powerful, so be careful how much you apply. We will be creating painted paper that we will later cut up into shapes to create our Rousseau-inspired landscape. As I blend the yellow and blue together to make green, I'm adding a little bit of water. I don't like to over mix my colors. I like to leave them streaky. And you can see different texture applications. I can use the back of my brush and scratch into a wet layer of paint and I can explore how my brush tip might make texture. I will want each piece of paper to have a variety of that color and texture. You can use sponges, brush tips, plastic, or even a wadded paper towel to get some interesting texture on your paper. As you're working with your paintbrush, remember to use your paintbrush in an up and down manner or in one direction to keep your paintbrush tip nice. And when rinsing all the color out of your brush, tap it on the bottom of your water cup so that the color can get washed out of your brush. I also keep something handy to dry my brush off. As I move into a blue paper, I'm thinking about using it for my sky. So using some black to create um, a stormy evening or a dark evening. And a little bit of water to blend it. As I add the white, I don't want to over blend it. I want to keep some white shapes to create clouds. You do not have to use black if you want to imagine a brighter day. Now I'll work with the primary colors, yellow and red. I'll be making a circular golden orb that I'll use for my sun. And I'll use some of these other warm tones for maybe flowers. Again, I'm mixing some other colors into my yellow but I like to leave some lights and so I won't mix in so much that I lose some of these other variations of color. I am still creating texture as I explore different warm tones. In this process, I am creating several pieces of painted paper for my collage purposes. You may use some magazines and supplement with a few pieces of painted paper, or you might just enjoy exploring colors over a period of a few days to acquire your um, papers to work with. Remember to make the process fun. There are lots of different ways to engage with this project idea that I'm demonstrating and this is just one way. 
I'm working with the primary colors red and blue to make some tones of purple and I'm still playing with texture. Henri Rousseau was 35 and a customs officer outside of Paris as he taught himself how to paint. His style was not originally accepted. And it was not until he was 49 when he was able to quit his job as a customs officer. I am planning on using this piece of paper for my wild animal and I have bent a piece of cardboard to make a pattern on it. I'm using a drawing paper to paint on, but you could also use a magazine. I'm going to make black paper for maybe a rock, and I'll also be making some brown paper. Once the paper is dry, the cutting fun begins. Rousseau's tropical landscapes were imagined by him, and we shall do the same. I will show you some techniques and collage, but you will also have ideas. I had painted two different backgrounds. Not only will I look at each of them, but I will turn them in different directions to see which way I like it. I have cut out my sun, and I've also cut out some land shapes and I will look at them and decide how to place them to create my composition. Composition is your placement and your choice in placing these shapes of colors control how the viewer's eye comes into your idea. Move your shapes around and notice which way you like them. A moon or sun shape in your sky is a very dynamic element, so notice how that plays in your composition and avoid putting it off in a corner, leading your viewer off the page. As I work on my animal pattern paper, I'm going to draw my animal on the back of the paper so that I can draw as many lines as I want to make the shape of my animal. I will use simple shapes and you can also use a photo reference when choosing what animal to create. You can do some body parts separate and then you have greater control of the movement of your animal. Although you can always cut and glue it back together, we are collaging. I am drawing the head of the tiger separately, so I can control the movement. Ears are small, and I will add the ears on later. Then I will cut it out and flip it over and see what I've got. In the past, I've done this project with some younger grades, and we've used Google Eyes on our creatures, and that can be fun. But I won't be doing that today. You can see by moving the different parts of the tiger, it gives it different expression or a different movement. Now I'm ready to add my tiger into my landscape. Rousseau's landscapes are sometimes like a hide and seek, and I'm looking at my tiger and how I want to place it among the tall grasses and plants. I will move my pieces around deciding on a composition that I think looks good and then I'll begin gluing elements down. If you go back and look at some of Rousseau's landscapes, you'll notice that sometimes he has a lot of movement in his paintings created by bent trees and angled grasses. So think about that as you're deciding on your composition. Notice how the different textures and different colors help each layer to pop out. With this piece, I like leaving my crumbled grasses to poke off the surface of the paper. In Rousseau's paintings, you often see layers of ground and branches and flowers 
and grasses and I'm going to be layering just a little bit in this piece. And at this point, we have a well-developed background, mid-ground, and foreground in our landscape. I love using this project to deepen our understanding of foreground, mid-ground, and background. The foreground is the area that feels closest to us and is generally towards the bottom of the canvas or the page. The mid-ground is the area in the middle of the canvas or the page. I currently have a rock in my mid-ground. And while the background may refer to the, the sky, it may also include things off in the distance. As I'm finishing up my Rousseau landscape, I'm creating flowers and deciding where to put them. I like how my tiger looks like he's about to leap out from behind a tall plant. As you glue in plants and flowers and grasses, remember you don't have to show all the information. So for instance, maybe you show some flowers, but you can't see the stem or the particular petals of that flower because something is on top of it. At this point, I've also decided this tiger looks a little lonely in this landscape, and I'm wondering about creating a little friend in the tree for it. Without you, I've gone ahead and used simple shapes to create a bird, and you'll see it appear in the tree momentarily, right there. You can use colored pencils or markers to add lines, designs, eyes, teeth. I hope you've had fun. Look up more fun information on Henri Rousseau, and I would love to see what you've created. Have an artful day.